this is probably a dumb thing, but I just started drawing on napkins because I knew all the fear went away right away. And then at one point I just made the realization like, hey, you can just do this in your sketchbook. You just gotta let that go. And then boom. Yeah, and I erase a lot using my white control Z. <laughs> I try and keep sketchbooks when I can, and even if I'm in my day job or going out, I don't always bring one, but I'm usually drawing almost every day. So even when I get back home, it's just a nice way to even kind of decompress at the end of a long day too, just sit down and, and start sketching a little bit. Um, yeah, and sometimes I'll get them halfway done and every then, now and then I'll go back because I forgot I didn't fill it up. Or, and then sometimes it goes really fast, sometimes it's in a month, sometimes it takes three months. I started out with smaller ones. I think I went to a big one on accident because it's all I had. But as soon as I did, I didn't want to go back to the smaller ones. I, I just love having the, the surface. I can really kind of get my, my wrist working across it. I do try and get some smaller ones if I have to have like a, keep something in my pocket. So if I'm at a cafe or have an idea, I can jot it down. But for the most part, these are, these are kind of fun. The great thing I like about my sketchbook is it's just a way to pour out ideas. So this is a way to just really get that freedom and just all the fear is gone. You can kind of just have fun, get the real flow to the designs and just kind of see where it takes you. It kind of jumps around a lot. Sometimes the things don't work, I'll go back and redesign them. And then once I get this worked out, I'll usually kind of take that into Photoshop or really design it further. But this is really just where I can make mistakes, see what's working, kind of chase down wild ideas, you're just playing around. And you can kind of see where drawings half start, don't start. I'll go over them, erase out other ones and just kind of see what happens. And sometimes I'll actually go back and revisit designs as well, just to kind of see if there's something new after I've taken a break from it for a while. Because sometimes your thinking kind of evolves a little bit. It's a good way to see how you've grown as well. I think sometimes you always want to push to be a really strong artist. And there's always that bar that's kind of above you. But the great thing is looking back and seeing, well, six months ago, I wasn't where I'm at today in a year. So I think the best thing is just seeing that growth. And that's the one thing I think as all artists, as long as you, you see that, I think, you know, there's hope and it's just going in the right way. For a long time, over the last few years, I've been drawing Old Norse. So to kind of keep me fresh at home, I try and draw it almost the opposite. So this is kind of like a samurai sci-fi, something a little different. And I'm just kind of really playing with those designs to get some characters going. Here's some more kind of the sci-fi samurai. I'm trying to take some of the motifs that I see in Japanese, mix them a little bit with some sci-fi images and trying to get like a, a mix of that. And if I can, I really like the costume details, just the tactile feel of all the costume work and even like period clothing from 20 years ago, or 50 years ago, or 100 years ago and, and trying to bring that in. So even my sci-fi stuff, the hope is that it feels a little grounded with that element into it. When I do my figure drawing, I do more pen work because I just wanted to really have a commitment to the line. So I'm really understanding the anatomy and the form this always helps me when I go back to my blue pencil, but I want to make sure there's, there's no undo, there's no eraser. And for this, I use the high tech C, which is a, just a nice fine line. Even though it's line work, I'm still just masking out those shapes, filling those in as I go, and just trying to get some of that gesture back into it. And then out in LA, it's really great too, because a lot of the figure drawing classes actually have models who get costumes and get in these really dramatic poses, and they really understand kind of what makes a good, good pose in a figure model. So it's just always really fantastic. And sometimes if the pose isn't working for me, I'll just draw the other people and the, the other artists. Um, again, just kind of like face studies from photos. Uh, that's a picture of my wife. I also worked on a lot of stylized projects when I first started working. Some of the most current stuff I have is more realistic. All right, these were, uh, I love creature design as well. And uh, something I like about any design is when you kind of get a contrast, something beautiful against something frightening. So I was trying to have these flowers that come to life and uh, maybe turn into the creatures themselves. So I was looking at kind of some actual flowers and just seeing how they almost start to look like hands and you can almost imagine that they're almost gonna start grabbing or you know, start to bring on elements of the jellyfish or stingray and you can kind of even see where I'm starting to write all this stuff down as I'm kind of going through it. This is more of that kind of uh, samurai inspired sci-fi stuff that I'm just kind of doing. Um, yeah, this was, again, it's a mix of sci-fi elements and looking at armor and then finding some kind of middle ground between the imagination and the real world reference. And I'm a big fan of also kind of like World War I and World War II elements and kind of bringing those feels into it. I found like my best designs and I think the designs I like of other artists that work are when it's imagination but equal parts reference because I think it brings a kind of believability to the work, but you see that creative imagination also just expounding on it as well. And then this is just kind of like 
imagining what the, the creature could be. Again, it's kind of taking things that are familiar, but putting a twist on it that maybe takes it a little bit out of the familiar. And I like looking for reference, and sometimes I'll just find some stuff that's not related in any way and just try and imagine how it might still be relevant. Because even if it's not really relevant to the subject matter, I'll still kind of go back and just see if there's a way we can kind of work it in and thread it in. I do everything. I'll do Google images or I'll go to like galleries. I still like books. I used to, when I was in school, I used to just go to the library all the time and just pick out a book on keys and the history of keys and go through that. And, and these are just kind of some robots. And I was drawing robots and I think unintentionally went back to samurai stuff uh, just because that's what I was had in my head. <laughs> so uh, I love the designs from The Wizard of Oz and just the world they created. So I was just kind of doing my pass on the characters that could exist in that world. And I ultimately want to do a pass maybe that's on all the like the more secondary characters that we never saw. And that's one of those worlds, I think you look at something like a, like a Star Wars or Alice in Wonderland or Harry Potter, they're so imaginative, you could just go kind of off the beaten path and it could still be like an interesting story with interesting characters as well. So these are kind of some of the flying monkeys. And then other things I kind of think of is they had all the different guilds, the Lollipop Guild, and I was thinking maybe they actually have the stonemasons who created the yellow brick road and maybe they have a different status than the people that actually made the emerald city and what each of those kind of guilds look like in there and then the core characters like the the scarecrow and the tin man just kind of reimagining a little bit of those so this is kind of my take on the scarecrow we kind of always talk about like show not tell and i like the idea that maybe instead of your standard uh, scarecrow he's actually made out of corn husks I'm Native American and in our culture we actually have masks made out of corn husks and I thought it'd be an interesting way to kind of take that into this and give a bit of a new take on a familiar design but then I also imagined his head's braided so when he says he doesn't have a brain he can actually pull a string and you, it opens up and you can actually see it and just the idea that if he was a scarecrow maybe when he came off of the the post they're still attached to him a little bit he kind of broke himself off and then this is my take on the tin man going with that idea that you can actually look through him and see he doesn't have a heart. And I was looking at a lot of French clocks and trying to get that. That feels like it's kind of sp period specific. But then also the idea that whoever made the Tin Man just showed him an amazing amount of love. So that was this design. And this isn't something I would show my, you know, the people above me, but this for me is just a way to really quickly generate ideas. I can do really bad stuff, but sometimes even in the bad stuff, there's like 5% of it that might be a gem that could really work. But you can see I really just wanted like a simple reductive shape and then just the different shapes of how this could kind of actually work. And then even the idea that maybe his ax is a key or maybe there's something deeper to that. Just kind of making those props with the character a little more personal. Um, and then here was just some kind of quick sketches for the scarecrow again. And here I'm even looking at like different cultures like Hopi Kachina dolls, carved dolls. And I'm just kind of thinking of all those things as I go. Sometimes I just draw random stuff on loose sheets and put it in. Uh, so this is more of a Day of the Dead, where I'm from in California on the West Coast. Uh, the Day of the Dead, they have festivals out there. I'm Native American, I thought that'd be a cool take to kind of take the Day of the Dead and then also have a little bit of the influence of the Native American culture as well. This is even kind of like more like a conquistador. Again, you can just see all the kind of stuff I'm, I'm thinking. And I think as you go through this, you could kind of start to see a bunch of those little fragments in the characters. Rat Rod, I actually wanted to have him driving a car. What I want to do with the car too is also make it feel like a skeleton, like all the pieces are missing, it's just a framework. The idea they're buried in the suit, a shine box. Maybe I was looking at old jute boxes for reference, old rail car tracks, old gas station. The idea was maybe one of them got brought back to life for a reason eating sugar skulls, paper figures, underground roots, cowboy boots, indigenous people, gold teeth money. Yeah, I don't know why those. <laughs> I don't know why, but I put a candle on his head. And here's kind of the six shooters that I referenced. You know, my dad wore, had a lot of cowboy boots growing up. So I was kind of adding those. And maybe again, just doing some roosters that are hanging out with this guy. Um, but these are some of the same elements too, like trying to make the gun have it all missing parts so it feels skeletal. Uh, same with the car. And just trying to think of like secondary characters who could exist in the world. I relate so much to characters that sometimes thinking about who they are to me can almost influence the story. Whether I'm doing this personal work or working on the job, I really try to imagine that all the characters are real. They've got a history even if we don't know about it. And hopefully it gives the design a little more depth and weight. 
And then, like I said, I was trying to imagine who this character is, how he died, how he came back to life. And is there someone that brought him back to life that almost takes, takes a life out of the flower and gives it back to him? And if he does break a bone, maybe it grows back in a really elegant way that all the designs on the skulls that you see are actually part of the way the magic in that world actually works and thematically trying to tie it all together. These ones are, uh, this is maybe like four years ago, five years ago when we moved to LA. Here's some more Day of the Dead. One thing I was actually trying to do is I imagine it took place in LA. I just moved to LA six years ago and it was also a way I felt like I could go and learn a little bit about the city, the architecture, the history. So that was kind of where I thought it would, would take place. A uh, little more stylized character. This is for a, a book we did called Punch Drunk Mustache, which was a bunch of uh, Lucas uh, art, animation, and film artists that all got together and wanted to just kind of put a book and show process and just how you think. That's my punch drunk boxer. Always loved doing creature stuff. This was a pass I was thinking of, a uh, different take on a minotaur. And here, here's another witch design. Again, I'm trying to look at different cultures too and kind of see, see what they can kind of bring and then play with it a little bit. And so this is where um, I started for the Day of the Dead stuff, it's kind of taking in more of the Central and South American influence. And you've seen some of those skulls that are actually have the shell work and the bead work actually done right on top of the, the skull. And even the braided hairs that they found in some of the mummies. And uh, again, I just thought it'd be so good to kind of tell ghost stories with this stuff that's more of a, a Western take on it and maybe a little different than what we traditionally see and tell some stories that are, are a little more unique. All right. So another thing I like about the blue pencil is I can really search for a shape. And then the nice thing is uh, it erases out almost seamless so you can't tell. So even though some of my line work looks very clean, the whole first part is really just searching for the shapes for me. Uh, I went to school for animation. Oh, we use a blue pencil for the non-photo blue and I just like the way, it's a little different than graphite on paper and I just like the way it, it kind of flows with the piece. I guess I kind of like working in things that are hard to see because even the thin figure drawing stuff, you really can't see that unless you get up close to that line work. Um, but I just like the sensitivity I can get in the, just the subtleties. I'll usually just really kind of keep it loose and light at first as I'm really figuring out what the, the shape is. I love shapes. I know, I know when you look at my work, it looks like I'm line work even with my, uh, my figure drawings, but it's all about the shapes to me. I've been drawing a lot of kind of undead guys for my job, so uh, I'm just thinking like an, uh, an un undead king, I'm trying to do that and like the way that the top of the head's broken, maybe it feels a little bit like a crown. A lot of it too for me is just kind of exercising my imagination as well. I don't think I have like a specific view that's stronger than anyone else, but I'm just constantly doing it. So it's like a muscle I'm always kind of exercising, you know? Oh man, I, I can tell if I don't draw for a week or so, I can, I can tell. I guess I have the benefit of doing it at work, <laughs> which helps. Um, since I'm, I'm the lead of the team I, I work on right now, and one thing I try and do is actually create time for the artist to sketch if they want to. I love it. it it's more rare just because we work in a digital medium, but I think it's still important to kind of have that kind of attention to detail and just a little bit of that personality kind of coming through in it. You know, so much of the stuff in the entertainment world, you know, is digital, I think it's, it's nice to really kind of see the, the genesis of where kind of all the art came from. And this is stuff I used to do growing up. I think all of us started with this. So the nice thing I, I do like about sketching is it's just pure from the artists as well. Um, I think there's a lot of just kind of unique elements that we can kind of take. And you always kind of see the, the personality and the make marking of any artist. And you can always see the, all those artists who always sketch, they all have their own personal mark making. One of the things I did when I first started working was I was part of a, an IP team and it was super creative. It was really fun. It was run by um, an artist who was basically my mentor, Jeff Sangali. And what he had us do is matched a new style with the new story. So if it was more dark or lighthearted, we always switch. So I wasn't used to it, but what I started to do is I'd switch to something very stylized, like almost like an animated feature. And then we'd go to something that's almost like a film noir graphic novel. And then we'd go realistic. And then we'd make something that's like vinyl toys. And it's just flat 2D side scroller. And at first it was super hard, but 
I just kind of jumped in and said, I'm going to do this. And that's why I have kind of a range of styles. And it was hard and difficult and I didn't know how to do it, but he just fired the creative cylinders in my head. But that kind of creative inspiration was really good. And it was a time it's like, I don't know how to do stylize. And I kind of thought, okay, I can actually give myself 20 reasons why I can't do this, or I can just start doing it. And so those first drawings were pretty bad, but the next day they were a little better and a little better. And then that snowball became really big and it uh, was something I became a lot more familiar and comfortable with as I did it. My 2D work actually helped my realism develop because it helped me organize my hierarchy of shapes and forms in my realistic work. And then my realistic work added a more believable depth to my stylized work. And it was funny, I didn't think of it at first, but then just seeing how that kind of evolved both kind of inspired the other one, so. Yeah, my dad was an artist and I think the one thing that was great, it wasn't necessarily um, teaching me all the time, but he would actually do like little scribbles when I was young and um, he said, hey, make, a, make something out of this. And then you go in there and you kind of start to think about what those lines start to form. And it's kind of like, you know, more or less what I actually really do as a concept artist is try and just find the stuff in there. When I was a kid, when I'd stay with him, me and my brother would be in his studio and we'd actually be sleeping under his paintings. He'd be working like in eight, 12 feet long pieces. And uh, when you're a little kid, I mean, it, it's like you're sleeping under a wall of art. And that was kind of where we grew up. And I'm still, still remember all that stuff really fondly. Well, that's one thing I think it takes a little longer for me too, is just all the shading since I'm not doing straight line work. The other thing is I, I love blue pencil, but it does take a little while to build up the, your darks. All right, I think I'm close to done here for this. I always feel a lot better after I'm sketching. And when you get in the zone, I, half the time I couldn't even tell you what I was doing. Sometimes it's a break from the kind of weight and responsibility you have during the day and to just go into that daydreaming sense for a little bit and then come back out and then pay the bills and do all that other stuff. I mean, there's something too, when you, you get a good sketch or a good design, the feeling's really rare. There's not a lot of other stuff that I actually get that feeling. There's times when I always feel good and everything's positive, but just when you hit a design you like, it's, uh, it's really unique. I don't know the best way to explain it that makes sense, but it's kind of like daydreaming when we were kids, you know? This is the times I still pinch myself that I'm able to kind of do a job where it is basically daydreaming for a living and then uh, kind of making it real. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty special. All right. I think there's sometimes you, you kind of get in the zone a little bit and then you realize the sun's coming up and 